All right, so you know you have an on switch, and this is the last lecture in the um, section about the on switch and how to switch the body on. So let's take a look what, at what this on switch does. We know you lose more weight. From the studies, we know you lose more weight, you crave less food, you make better food choices, you eat less without trying, you have an improved fat loss, and you improve your mood. But we don't really know how the switch works yet. So let's take a look at, at what happens with the switch. Now, most of us know, well, even when you know about the switch, the minute you get on the scale or you walk past the bakery and think, oh, darn, I shouldn't eat that, or mm, that looks so great, but I'm not allowed to have that, you're switching that switch off because you know that switch is related to mood and to emotions. And the minute you're feeling fear because you don't want to eat something or you're feeling anger or frustration because you got on the scale and the wrong numbers in front of you, you're actually switching that switch off. So you're, you're stopping yourself achieving the goals that you've set out to achieve just by being frustrated or angry about not achieving that goal. So I really believe knowledge is power. And the more you know about the switch, the less you'll be inclined to stick your fingers in the socket or stick your hand on the stove. We know how dangerous electricity is and how dangerous the stove is. And because of our knowledge of it, you automatically avoid those situations. So I'd like to for you to have the same kind of knowledge about this on and off switch, this war and peace switch, so that you are focused on switching off the war switch whenever it switches itself on. And it happens all the time. We, we do live in a stressed environment. You do have to stand in queues. Boss is going to come in and yell. And the most important thing to realize is that once you realize your switch has been switched on, your war switch has been switched on, you need to stop and switch it off. Take the time to switch it off. So this lecture will give you the knowledge about that switch and how to switch it off. Stress is the war switch. It's the emotion of frustration, anger. Any negative emotion is related to stress, which is what we are calling the war, war switch. Stress not only stops weight loss. Stress causes cancer. It causes diabetes. It causes heart disease. Stress actually kills you slowly, kills you just as easily as sticking your hands in the socket. It's just that it's effect is a lot slower than sticking your hand on the stove or in the socket. So let's take a look at what war and peace really do in the body. The war switch or the stress switch is activated by the sympathetic nervous system. The minute you feel a threat or fear or anger or frustration or any negative emotion, the sympathetic nervous system in the body suddenly takes off and starts sending out adrenaline and cortisol. And cortisol is so bad that it's actually called the death hormone by some doctors. So as I said, the minute you're in a negative state of mind, you need to be aware of the fact that you're in a state of war and you need to switch to a state of peace. And you do that by shifting your emotions, by doing that four times a day when you eat, by anticipating your food, looking forward to your food, being grateful to your food, and also using the emotional shift technique that we, we taught in the previous lecture. Peace, on the other hand, activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's when we feel the love, joy, appreciation. It's kind of an egg and chicken situation. I don't know if the dopamine and the serotonin and the oxytocin that your body actually pumps out when you're in a peace situation causes you to feel love, joy, appreciation, or whether the love feeling, creating that feeling of love, joy, and appreciation causes the dopamine in the body, which makes you feel better. But either way, it's a vicious cycle one way or the other. And you really want to try and start living in the emotional moods of joy, peace, love, and appreciation. And the more you do that, the more the body will pump out dopamine and serotonin and, and oxytocin. And oxytocin is called the love hormone. So you have a choice. You can either get your body to produce adrenaline and cortisol, which will kill you slowly, or you can get your body to produce dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin by just changing your mood, by consciously changing your mood when you notice you're in an, a negative state of mind. But let's take a look at what these things really, really do in the body. So first, in terms of the brain, in a war situation, the primitive brain takes over. This is why you're making bad food choices. Because the primitive brain says that we're under stress, we're, we're being threatened, so the reaction rate needs to increase. So we don't need time to have logic and reason and to work out perhaps which the best tree is to climb up if a tiger is chasing after us. All we need is fast reaction rates 
really quick decision-making skills. And also we need to crave carbohydrates and sugars to fuel the muscles fast to run away. So the primitive brain switches on when you're in a stressful situation. In terms of your eyes, your eyes become very focused, but they become focused on movement. And that's why you can't see what's right in front of you, because you get what's called tunnel vision. You only focus on things that are going to jump out of the jungle. Once, once again, evolution haven't, hasn't caught up with the fact that we don't live in a jungle and that we're actually safe. In terms of your ears, your ears become hyper-focused, again, just on loud movements or cracks or things that may happen in the jungle so that you can stay safe. So because the primitive brain is switched off and the ears are hyper-focused, you can't concentrate. There have been a number of studies on children who are under stress. Who really, they, it's not that they can't learn. It's that they're not hearing what's being told to them because they're in a stressed situation and their ears are not working properly. In terms of the heart, and this is really important, the adrenaline and the cortisol that's pumped out cause the heart to beat faster, to beat harder. So heart rate increases blood pressure increases, and this is how we get heart disease, heart attacks, strokes. This is responsible for the heart disease that we see around the world. It's a constant stress situation that increases the adrenaline levels and the cortisol levels in your body all the time. So in a stressful situation, you're actually causing your heart to work much, much harder. In terms of the lungs, oxygen is sent to the muscles and the arms and the legs, but the oxygen to the organs is switched off. So you are getting less oxygen to your organs, so you're becoming less and less healthy. The kidneys, the pancreas, the liver, all of the things that keep us healthy, they're starved of oxygen when you're in a stressed situation because the stressed situation wants to send energy to the, the muscles so that we can run away. In terms of digestion, dige the digestive system is switched off. As you saw in the studies, your carbohydrate and sugar digestion is the only thing that remains on so that it can send energy to the muscles and the, the arms and the legs. So you stay hungry. The pancreas actually increases its production of insulin to increase the blood glucose that's available in the body. So your blood glucose levels rise, which means you crave sugars and carbs. And that's how that study works is the more stressed you are, the more sugar and carbs you crave to be able to run away. Also, the brain switches off the ability to f feel full. You make more ghrelin, which makes, means you're hungry because the body is in a state of survival. It wants to get as much energy as it can, so it's going to stay hungry for sugars and carbs that will fuel the muscles, so you'll automatically eat more. And then the most important thing is the immune system is switched off. So in terms of health and well-being, your whole immune system is suppressed when you're in a state of stress. So a metabolism... The fat loss, the switch that says it's fine, you can lose weight, is switched off because obviously the body wants to store as much energy as it can. The fat production switch is switched on because it wants to turn as much fat into energy as it can. So you produce more fat and you use less fat. So for weight loss, that's a, a terrible, terrible combination, which is why peace and weight loss is the winning combination. If you want to lose weight, you really need to learn to change your mind and to change your state of mind into a positive. As you learned from the one-minute metabolism and the energy shifting, happiness, appreciation, love, joy, gratitude, these are all moods which automatically switch the body from one of parasympathetic to the sympathetic nervous system. So in terms of peace, logic and reason are switched on. The body says, I'm not under pressure, I'm not being chased by a tiger, so I can therefore take the time to make a logical choice and to weigh up my choices. This means you make better food choices automatically. You're also not craving the carbohydrates and the sugars, so you're able to make better food choices. The eyes see more. Your ears hear more. The parasympathetic nervous system releases all those feel-good hormones that you need in your body for you to feel good, see the world in a better way. In terms of the heart rate, the oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, they cause the heart rate to decrease. They cause the blood pressure to decrease and they cause the heart to send the blood to the organs, which improves your overall health and well-being and your metabolism and therefore your weight loss. In terms of the lungs, you get increased metabolism means increased oxygen to the organs and increased health. So your lungs are therefore focused on sending more oxygen to the organs than the muscles. In terms of digestion, your digestion is switched on. 
So the stomach produces enzymes that can actually break down the food, absorb all the vitamins, minerals from the food. The pancreas reduces the glucose that it produces. So with that reduction, you crave less sugar. The body is able to produce ghrelin and the other hormones that stop us feeling hungry. So you feel fuller quicker. And you feel fuller for longer. And you've seen the studies that show this. And this is really just changing your state of mind to a state of peace each time you notice you've gone into a state of war. Also in a state of peace, the mouth produces saliva. Your mouth, you'll see in the next lecture when we go into all the bits of the engine and how your engine works in your body, the, the saliva in the mouth is essential for good digestion for a number of reasons. It improves digestion and you actually absorb 80% of your vitamins, minerals and nutrients through your mouth. So it's really important that the mouth is switched on and that's what the anticipation of the one minute metabolism does. It switches on the mouth. You'll notice that you start, you get like mouth watering when you're anticipating your food. So your mouth switches on the, the saliva glands and you absorb more. Finally, in a state of peace, your immune system is switched on. The body has time to make the lymphocytes and the T cells and all of the good cells that fight off bacteria. So we automatically start being healthier as, as a human body. And in terms of metabolism, fat production is switched off because we're no longer in a fear state. The body's no longer creating extra energy for the muscles, the arms and the legs. So fat production is switched off and the body says, yeah, we can let go some of this fat because we're not in a fearful situation. We're not going to have to run and hide or stand and fight. So you really need to think about switching on your P-switch. And it's up to you to notice your moods. So for the first week, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be focusing on in the Expediting Your Weight Loss course that you'll get a coupon to at the end of this course, is we're going to be focusing on firstly applying the one-minute metabolism and the energy shifting techniques, and secondly, monitoring our state, monitoring state of mind, just starting to pay attention to how many times you actually go into a state of war and how to switch that off, and how you, good you feel after a week of switching from a state of war to a state of peace. So it's a concerted effort to just for the first week monitor your state of mind, monitor your moods and emotions and to switch to a state of peace each time you know that you're in a state of war and to use the one minute metabolism every time you eat. And I promise you at the end of that first week, you will start noticing huge differences in your approach to food, in how food is feeding you and also in your diet and your metabolism.